In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this dishcloth just like this. This is the Tunisian Simple Stitch. This is part of the Learn Tunisian hosted by Mikey. Today we're going to show you how to do this dishcloth and then if you want you can also do some cross stitch work in order to make really cool patterns just like this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to learn how to do a simple stitch dish cloth and you can see that the dish cloths are all kind of different and when you use variegated yarn especially in the cottons just like so you end up with a really neat look just like this. So this is the same thing but done in variegated yarn. What we're going to be doing today is covering the basics of doing a simple stitch in order to help learn the process of doing Tunisian and uh, if you want this is the embroidery version and there's a graph on the particular pattern that you can use and the information is in the more information of this link or of this video. So what we have is this is what the back looks like and you can see so it's a front side of project. If you want both sides to be identical then I'd recommend doing a double um, one of these and then just sewing it together so that both front sides are on, on the on opposite to each other if you don't like the back look of your particular project. Either way you do it it's still a great way and you'll realize how fast these are to make too. So even if you don't want to do the embroidery this pattern will still work for you because the sizing is just perfect. To do today's project you're just going to need one ball of sugar, lily and cream in order to make it happen. Now you'll notice in the ball band that it's recommending a five millimeter crochet hook or a size H. Now what you're going to be noticing is that on the Tunisian pattern and we talked about this in the introduction of the Tunisian series is that we have to move up a crochet hooks or afghan hooks in size in order to make it work. So you need a size a J today or a six millimeter in order to make it happen and a an afghan hook just like this in order to do it. You can't use a regular um, crochet hook for this particular method as the dish cloth is way too long and needs to be on the entire hook in order to make it work. So if you had a regular hook you'll run out of hand space and then it'll fall off the other side anyway. So let's begin to do the casting on process. To begin we're just gonna create a slip knot just like you regularly would with crochet and we're gonna insert our afghan hook in and we just simply wanna treat this like regular crochet at this point and according to the instructions it says that we have to chain 26. Remember that this never counts as one. So we're just gonna yarn over and pull through. So one, two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 and 25 and 26. So there is our chaining of 26 to start with just like you regular, regularly would and now let's begin the Tunisian process. For this entire dishcloth we're gonna be using the simple stitch technique and this is known as a uh, TSS. So you'll see that in the patterns uh, for this particular one. So we have to go from second chain to the hook or uh, from the hook so one and two and then we simply turn over that chain and go into the back loop only and insert in. Okay and we grab the yarn and we pull and leave it onto the hook moving it down to get the actual thickness of the shaft. So we don't want to leave it down here as it will be a different thickness. Move it down so it just gets that right amount of yarn. We simply once we do the first back one the next one will just be jumping up right in front of you and we yarn over it and just start collecting on top of your, your crochet hook just like this. And we're moving all the way down. By going onto the back um, loop only what happens is that it helps reduce the amount of curl. There will be because this um, is gonna have a little bit of tension. You never want your dish cloths being really loosey goosey. You want them uh, somewhat tight so you can actually scrub those dishes and get them sparkling clean. If you don't even have a dishwasher. <laughs> but you know of course me you know we do have a dishwasher but we do need dish cloths. We go through quite a bit of them. Uh, you don't realize it until laundry day. So we're just gonna collect them just like this. 
and I'm going all the way down. So we technically by the end of it we should have a total of 26 of these loops as we collect. So you can see as we're collecting more my hand is kind of shifting backward so I'm not grabbing onto those strands. If you have big projects you can kind of go over top of them if you wish but I, I don't like to do that. It's not a preference for me. Um, especially on a project this size it's not necessary. And it's like knitting needles in some way you can kind of compress them all into the hook anyway to make it easier to, to manage. So we're collecting all the way across. And remember this is the Tunisian simple stitch that we're going to be doing. And this is something you can do in front of the TV easily. So we come into the last one just like so and we're ready then to go back. So with the Tunisian we always just go back and forward. We never turn our project around. We just continue to go back and forward. So to go in the back into where we came we have to yarn over and pull through one loop only. So we're just chaining one and then wrap the hook and pull through two and then yarn over and pull through two and we do that all the way back. And I'm kind of using my this hand here to kind of pull it off the hook. So it's slightly different motion than crochet in some way um, but it has a really neat look to it. And I'm just yarning over and pulling it through two. We're gonna do this each and every time. There's no bells or whistles in this particular project for doing anything complicated. This is the basics of getting started with Tunisian. Okay, so I'm getting all the way back and I'm gonna show you how to get started on the next row. So you're going to want to continue to do this uh, same instructions until this gets into an eight inch height if you wish or you can just continue to use the ball up to you. So we're going to start off in the next row and how we do it is that you can see the first vertical is right here. Some people think they need to go into that. You need to go to the second one over and just into the vertical Okay, so just right in behind the vertical strand going up. You can see that all the vertical strands are here and we just slide in behind it, yarn over and pull through. Okay, so go into the next vertical that you see, going behind it, just one strand, yarn over and pull through. And we're just collecting. Okay. And that's all you're just gonna do. This is a simple stitch and it really is simple. You're going to notice that your work is gonna curl. That is normal. So um, as I get a little bit bigger and then when, as you get bigger you're gonna notice more and more of a curl and then eventually um, the project will get a nice size like within an inch or two and then you'll notice that the curl won't be in your face any longer and it will just be moved further down in the project. Now if this twists around the hook like this part of the project I don't worry about it. It's uh, you know it's, it's just it's just what it is. So we're just going to continue just a simple stitch all the way through. So you can kind of see it's kind of wrapping around the hook a bit on over here. No big deal. I'm not even worried about it. You don't worry about it until you get to it. And eventually when you work your way back anyway it's gonna it's gonna settle down on its own anyway. Okay, so going all the way across. So here's what we need to do when we get to the final part is that we need to make sure that we handle this edging on this side properly each and every time. Okay, so you got two stitches left. I'm gonna go into this uh, behind this vertical. So what we have to do then is on this one here we don't ever just go into one vertical. We make sure we go into the actual um, chain space there. You'll see two strands on top of your hook. Yarn over and pull through both of those. That's the only way you won't have any un unsightly gaps on the other side. To return back to where we came from again yarning over pulling it through one loop for the very first time and then yarn over and pull through two for the remaining. So going backward is always faster than going forward because there's really not a lot to think about. And you're going to notice that your project is gonna start doing a lean to it. That's a normal characteristic as per what we talked about in the very beginning. Um, when you go to block it 
this particular one here uh, pattern is that you don't have to do a border to it but you can simply if you wish drop your hook back down to the recommendation of the five millimeter size H and then just chase the outside with a, a single crochet border if you wish. If you use the same size hook that I'm using right now is that the the um, the boarding will look all ruffled and not consistent and that's because Tunisian has a tighter tension than regular crochet and so if you go to do a regular crochet technique all the way around with this bigger hook it'll show. So let's begin again. So we're just, I'm gonna just show it one more time and then I'm gonna show you how to cast off. So Im immediately we just skip the first one right on the edge and go to the second right in behind the vertical strand and you just start collecting all over again. So yarning over and collect. You will get used to using this particular uh, hook. It's a little bit of a technique uh, getting used to it but it looks amazing once you get it going. So okay so continue to do that and I'll meet you in the back. So just I'm gonna show you again on the other side where we have to go and then um, I'm gonna show you how to do the cast off process when you're done on the height that you want for the, your particular project. When you come to the final edge you just gotta make sure that you you're getting this last one here before. Okay so the final edge here we don't just go into one strand we always make sure we go into two. It's a chain there and pull through first and then to return yarn over pull through one and then yarn over and pull through two all the way back. So do that all the way back and continue with your project. Uh, when I come back in just a moment I'll show you how to do the casting off process and to finalize it at that time. Let's begin to do the fastening off. Now if I stop right now and I'm still on this side of the project and what's happening is that you will see that you have an edge where you have massive holes through it. Okay so that means that it's not proper. So when we fasten off we have to be on this side. So to do that we have to do a cast off process. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna start off like a simple stitch going into the next vertical and pulling it through and through. Okay go into the next vertical pull through and through and essentially you're making, you're fastening off and making your way all the way back to the other side in a regular format. And what this is doing is it's changing it from being a hole to being filled in as you can see. So it's pulling up on those strings shifting that extra yarn down in between to hide that particular hole. And that's how you would do the fastening off process or casting off process for most of your Tunisian work. Okay, so do that all the way across and when we come back I'll just fasten off and then I'll just cover the basics. I'm doing some cross stitch if you wish to do the pattern as seen. When you get to the other side essentially you just wanna continue to go into your vertical strands and then on the very end just like you would be regularly you go into the chain and then pull through and through and now you can fasten off and then weave in your ends and you can see that the edging on top and the bottom actually looks consistent by doing it that way. So that's how to do the fastening off process. So let's uh, begin to do the, re the review um, for actually doing the embroidery and in the pattern it actually has a diagram on what you can follow when it comes to it. So here's the stitching diagram. You can actually put your own patterns too. So if you wish to just do up your own chart you can write, uh, do your own uh, kind of ideas just like this. So let's uh, be able to do that and I'll show you that in just a moment. So to begin what happens is that the simple stitch looks like a grid. If you really just break it down with your eyes you can actually physically see you have the points of a square. So all this is is that they're doing embroidery following the diagram just like you see. Here's what the back looks like. It's not the prettiest thing um, but that's the whole point of this whole creativity is that you know this is a one sided project. So if you want to have this on both sides all you just need to do is do another particular panel like this and just sew it around the edges and then just you'll have a double thickness uh, but both sides will actually appear to be completely done. So you can see it's just a regular cross stitching 
just like this and it comes to a really neat look. Now there is no border on this particular one. It's just right from wh where we started. It probably has been blocked. So it probably has been wet and laid flat and then just pushed down. Um, you may have a curl to your particular project but if you do that uh, blocking then it will probably sit flat just like you see here. So if you do want to have a border all you just need to do is reduce your hook back down to a size H or a five millimeter and just uh, simply go into each one of the stitches that you see on the edges and on the tops just like so on all the way around and just chase it on the corners. You want to put three single crochets so you can do the corners and uh, I think I have another example where I've done that here. So this is done with a variegated yarn just like there. So you can see that I've just chased the, the, the borders with just a single crochet putting in three single crochets there and it provides a really nice look too. So that's up to you. This is what the back looks like at this particular point if it's variegated so it looks just as attractive and uh, this is just how you do a simple dishcloth in the Tunisian simple stitch. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see ya.